I'm going to quickly teach you how you can use Pipedream to listen to new reactions on Slack messages and then look up the actual message content using Pipedream. And it's a quick three step process. The first, you create a new Slack trigger on a reaction. I'm going to select my Slack account that I've authenticated with. And then I recommend making sure you limit this to one channel. And I'll show you why in just a minute here. But I'm going to look for my playground channel. And then we'll create this trigger. Great. Now the trigger is created. We need to send a test event in order to build our workflow off of this test event. So I'm going to return to Slack and then navigate to my test channel here. And we'll say uh, one, two, three, four. Four, five, six test for video. And that has a new message. So the way we trigger the workflow is add a reaction. So I add a reaction. Let's return to Pipedream. And Pipedream picked up on that test event. And we can select it here in the builder. And it's a new reaction added. Now we can see the reaction emoji. We can see the ID of the user, the event timestamp. This is very important for later. But we don't actually see the message content at least now. So we'll have to add a few more actions here so that way we can find it. Now the next step is to add a new Slack, use any Slack API and Node.js action here under the Slack app. We'll select this and this creates an empty template Slack API request. And I'll show you how to set this up step by step so that way you can retrieve the message content. If you look at the Slack documentation, they have a special area called retrieving individual messages. This will teach you how you can stru structure the payload of an API request to find one specific message from an ID. So here's the example. It's a GET request to this endpoint. So we'll copy that. We'll paste it in the URL section of our request. And then we'll also grab this data here that it expects. It's just sample data and we'll fill it out with our specific use case. Now, this, these are query parameters. So you type in query, and then you paste in that example. I'll be leaving the code as an example in the description below. But just so you understand how, where this is all coming from, it's asking for the conversation ID, where the, where the message is, and then the latest timestamp. This is how it finds the message by timestamp, not by ID. So I'm going to add a quick intermediate step here so we can find this, the Slack channel ID that we need. So we'll search for get channel. We'll use the get channel action. We'll connect our Slack account, and then we'll search for a channel, the one that we are listening to, which is the playground, right? Select playground. We'll click test. This doesn't require any kind of message. It just is searching for the channel based on the name I gave it. And under here, we can see the channel ID is here. So we'll copy that value. It's not going to change. We're going to keep it the same. It's going to stay the same. We'll paste it here in our channel. It needs to be wrapped in a set of parentheses. And then the latest message is the timestamp value. So we'll delete that. We'll go back to our original trigger results. And here we can see the event timestamp. TS is short for timestamp. So we'll copy the path to this variable. And then we'll go back down to Slack and we'll paste it in here. So now we're telling Slack, get the history of this conversation, the conversation with this ID, and the latest message is the timestamp from the trigger. We'll click test. I'm sorry, I messed up. This should be params. It's a query param, but the, the key should be params. Slight error there. And then beneath we could see here's the exact message text. One, two, three, four, five, six, test for video. We can see the user who sent it. We can see the actual reaction and who left it. So this is a short tutorial to teach you how you can actually extract the message data from the brand new trigger called on new reaction added. Then you can send this message to a Notion page or database or Google Sheet 
or whatever you'd like. But this is the basics of how to find a specific message text from a reaction.